Hello friends, this is a big one, a very big one. As always, if you have been enjoying the series, do drop a like. It really does help out with the algorithm and all that. And each like, of course, drops Kumla down one place in the league so they can finish minus 300 and something. That'd be good, wouldn't it? I'd love that. Now, we've got a bumper crop of stuff today, so stay tuned, including a game away at Seven Islands at the final part of this video, which I think is going to be absolutely enormous uh, in terms of the chances in the league title this year. Because when you just look at the goal differences so far, it feels like us and them are the standouts in the league this year. Now, that obviously doesn't mean a great deal, but it does still show that we're scoring a lot and not conceding as many and that's always a good sign but i did want to briefly take a look at the sort of squad comparison very very quickly just to sort of see that we're not really we're above average in a few areas across the physicals this is just the average across the whole team because otherwise it gets a bit too minute but you can see acceleration and pace we really are below average on those two factors and on the mentals we do exist really nicely on composure and determination but again we're still quite below average on a lot of other factors and when it comes to the technicals we have the best heading in the league but there's a lot of other areas where we really do struggle things like first touch and dribbling so i don't really think that this squad should have been so heavily favoured. I think it has changed slightly. We're now four to nine, still favourites for the title, despite the fact that we've got nobody in the Dream 11, which is still really suspicious. I've got to be honest with you. And also, I want to say a massive thank you to new patrons, Lad Lad and Connor Stewart. So thank you so much for that. And to everyone else over there uh, supporting me to be able to make content like this. And that makes me extremely happy. So thank you guys. First up though, at home against Lin Shipping City. This is not easy, but at the very least, we are at home. Now, the things we learned in the last game is that Eric Eriksson looks quite nice in that spot. Eric Hargadal, the two Eriks, if you like, uh, look like the two that I think I'm going to persist with going forward in those two wide positions as far as the center backs goes but i'm just very happy with the way this team is shaping up right now hopefully we're in it for the long haul this season and we can really make a big dent today but this is going to be far from easy it's second no third versus fourth in the league at the moment and that is a very very big game but at the very least we have the home advantage in front of the home fan i was going to say fan singular but I don't think I can even say that. It's fine. In my head cannon, there's a thousand guys standing right behind the camera, just directly in a line. Eriksson slowly retreating back down the field. That's fine. Keeping the ball, keeping the possession really nicely. I'm expecting big things from Hargadal. He's made a few mistakes. Oh, hello. Gabriel Pettersson brings it down. Well then. Okay. Hell hath frozen over. Uxal 1, Linkshipping City 0. And it's Gabriel Pettersson of all people that has given us the lead with a lutonda s finish. But the weirdest thing about this, firstly, great ball from Hargadar, lovely flick over by Lutonda of all people. The first touch from Pettersson is actually sublime and the finishing is brilliant. He's finally listened. Anderson always feels like he could take on his man out wide. This time he's cut back inside for Gustafsson. That's fine, it's back to him. Whipped in again, Gabriel Pettersson. He got a header on target. It didn't go over the bar. Eliasson's delivery this time. Hargadar does get it over the bar. Suleiman. Oh, that's a good ball. Cornell's onto the end of it. It's their first chance of the game for Linshipping, and they've scored their first shot of the match. 32 minutes on. Tiger Cornell. That's not a real human. I'm convinced of it. Uxal 1, Linshipping City 1. That's literally the first shot they've had in the entire match. Oh, Vuznarekis, I think, has some splaining to do on this one. He gets caught out by pushing up for some reason. Cornell, we're not playing an offside trap. Cornell gets there, and well... Uh, it's just a great goal, but very disappointing to concede off their first shot. It's not been a good first half. Uh, disappointed to concede the way we did, though. I still think of, of the two sides, if there could be a better team, I think it was probably us. But we really did lose a lot of uh, energy after the initial blowout. Ooh, Pettersson does love a long-range free kick, though. Drills it. Good lord, and it's the bar again. I mean, we've seen nothing from them other than their goal, but unfortunately, goals count for quite a lot. As Ericsson's header, I don't know why he was even up there. Elias on again. Second half has pretty much picked up the same way the first half left off, with just us being in the ascendancy, but Pettersson's header is in! Oh my goodness me, he scored twice in one game. Do not adjust your sets. It is Uxal 2, Linshipping City 1, and I think we've deserved it just about. The chances have been few and far between for both teams. What a ball in from Eliasson, but the header from Pettersson here. Goalkeeper gets a hand to it, but it is not enough to do anything about it, and it's 2-1 Uxal. Huge goal. Flying down the left-hand side. I love that I choose to bring him on instead of Lutonda! Who's missed the target. Eliasson has had to go off injured, which means Volnadal is going to move out to right wing back now, and I've brought on Melka Ante no, um, Albin Anderson on, on the left, but that's a big miss if we were to lose him. Voldemar's ball, though. Luton! Have they switched places? Is this like Freaky Friday? Forwards wise has actually got a lot better in the second half, to be fair. We just can't hit the target enough. Voldemar, though, is a delivery genius. Ball in. Hagerdahl clips it off the crossbar again. Gustafsson. Can he turn creator, though? Screws it back for Lutonda. Oh, it's clipped the crossbar again. I think we've hit the post five times in this game. Oh, skates past his man. He looks comfortable anywhere. Honestly, I think he could drive a train without any problem. Arlander scoops it. 
Oh, wow. What is it about substitutes playing in the attacking midfield row? As Arlander now scores, that's the sixth goal scored by a substitute in that position for this team. I'm just utterly baffled by the sheer amount of goals those guys are capable of getting off the bench in that position. Lutonda through the middle for four, maybe. It's four. I don't even know what's happening. This time he's finally found a bit of form there after missing quite a few chances today. Uxal 4, Linköping City 1. Impressive from the guys. Absolutely stunning victory against the team that were directly below us in the league. I mean, look at the second half. We just blew them away. And that does leave us top of the league, albeit only on goal difference right now. But Kumla looked like they did know they dropped yet more points. In fact, they were actually playing against Savadarlands. So that's helped us out tremendously, allowing us to leapfrog both of them and now put ourselves in the driving seat as we push. We're nearly at the halfway stage of the year. I think we are firmly in a title race if we carry on playing like this. And this excites me. Kumla are now bottom of the XG table. This is incredible. I wonder how high they'll finish. Callie. We need to meet soon. Keelers Park, 11 p.m. after the seven arms game. Come alone. We don't have much time. Bit of a poor performance from us in many ways, actually. Yet to have a shot on target in 60 minutes. Just a few headers that have sort of skimmed the crossbar. <laughs> Imagine that, eh? Lutonda picks it up, though. Can he finally create a bit of danger for us? Antonsson, back for Luton. He's going to shoot from range here. Oh, it's a crossbar again! Nil-nil draw without us hitting a shot on target in the entire match. But we did manage to hit the post another three times. If you, Sorry, crossbar slash post another three times in this game. I don't know. Is it magnetic? It drops us back off the top again as Kumla are able to pick up a victory. We play them in the very next game, though. So we're still right in there, but that's a disappointing one. Volnadal now with 12 minutes to go. Goes for Hagerdahl on the back post and it's well saved. And Ericsson can't put it over the line. The best chance of the game that we've had was that one right there and it hit the post. Oh, um, <laughs> Idarovic with the chance from the spot. And it's saved by Alex Beria. That's a big moment. Back-to-back nil-nil draws. I, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> But once again, best chance of the game we had hit the post. Uh, story of our season, really. Story of today, certainly. We still managed to stay second in the league, but it's getting very, very tight up there as Kumla managed to once again remain top of the division, incredibly. The Tidby managers just give me a call to say I'm delighted with the amount of first-team football you've given Jonathan Andreasen following our previous discussions. Still hasn't made a first-team appearance for us. Don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Need to mark everybody up here. It's off the... Oh. It's off the crossbar and in. Elias Sutton now to the byline. Whoops it in. Lutonda on the end of it. And that is finally a goal for us. Socrates Lutonda with a brilliant header. Stenungsen one, Uxal one. And the strike force have finally woken up Volnadal again. Hagadal's definitely got the beating of his man. And now he's been fouled. Socrates Lutonda from the spot drills it home. And it's Stenungsen one, Uxal nil. We've had to come from behind here. How on earth at the moment we're only going to win this game by two goals to one is beyond me. Uh, but that's just how things go. I swear to God, if we let in a goal now. I don't know how we didn't win that, but that's what's just happened. Um, yeah, that was a great performance, technically, but just giving up goals out of nothing. Alban Anderson has moved clubs because he wasn't playing here. He was on money and they actually offered us a fee and we really had no choice on it because he was, yeah, it just wasn't going to happen for him here. Out for Volodo. Bit of space, though. Can he whip it through for someone? He finds Pettersson! And it's 1-0 Uxo. Gabriel Pettersson. God, we've made it really hard work against the bottom club who've barely won a game all season. Nice football, actually. Lutonda picks up. This is some lovely one-touch stuff. Is there a return? Oh, my God. If we turn this into a goal, Lutonda might not be able to shoot from this range, but he could still keep going. Keep the pressure on them. Antonsson now. Scoops it in. Pettersson said, what a piece of football. Well, there we go. A hard-fought win over the bottom club Lidshipping with two goals from Gabriel Pettersson. Honestly, I think we only just about edged this as the better side. Yes, we have. Now, by an, a clear point, we are top of the league. But there is only t one point separates the top four and three points separating the top five in this division. Lutonda dropping a bit deeper this time to take his man on, maybe. Try and free up some space in behind. And now he's got that space. He's got options in the box too. He's going to have to turn provider maybe. It's always slotted in by Oscar Arlander. Some of the better teams in this league, we can sort of open up against a little bit more if they come at us. And against these teams, we tend to get the results a little bit more. Just have a bit more of a struggly performance in them again. But I think, again, better side got the win huge. Particularly as with results elsewhere, that pushes us three points clear at the top now. And look at that. There's four sides tied on 30 points. Judgment day. Seven islands away. The top two face off against each other with only nine matches to go. A win for us could push us six points clear, although it seems unlikely given that all the other teams are also on 30 points. That's just the magic number this year. It's just so obvious when you look at the ratings of Eriksson and Hagedal. 6.8 over that period. When you compare that to the sort of 6.5s, 6.6s we were seeing before, they're regularly putting in performances that are at the very least sort of your 6.9s, occasional 7s for those guys as well. They've definitely formed a nice partnership. So big up to the Eric Hagedal uh, fan club there. They'll all be very happy that he's actually settled in really, really nicely. It's back to channeling a little bit of that black metal 
football to hopefully put Seva Darlands in the bin so Cali can concentrate on other things. It's going to depend very heavily on which Uxalt turns up today. The highly creative attacking threat with defensive stability or a bit of neither, uh, which has been the case. We've had some good defensive performances lately, though. Four clean sheets in our last five games is very, very impressive from these th th these guys at the back. A little bit of space opening up now, and again, Eliasson is being left in a lot of space today, which is a dangerous idea if you're Seva Darlins. Pulls it across for Arlander. Scoop, tackle, Gustafsson. I don't know what he's doing. Antonsson has scored! Melka Antonsson. Eight minutes under the clock. Never mind. What a brilliant... I don't know if the referee was actually going to give us a penalty there or not. Because it looked like a hell of a tackle in the penalty area there. And I don't know if he got the ball or not. But it doesn't matter because we lead. Ellison's ball across. Ah, to be fair, I think he does win the ball <laughs> before clattering our man. But what about that? Left foot. Antonsson drills one home and we have the lead. Olsen scoops the delivery in its back post and it's a good save from Beria. He's going to have to be on his, on his best behaviour today. Wow. <laughs> we have a combined XG of 0.28. Been a terrible game. But we are currently not edging it. Edging it on the scoreline, but that's about it. Eliasson. Hargit. He's there. Goalkeeper's there, though. Oh, no! It doesn't matter because it's Eric Eriksson and it's 2-0! This is a very undeserved lead that we've got now by two goals to nil. All those balls are being aimed by Eric Hagenal. All of a sudden, Eric Eriksson, another of the Eriks, pops up with a brilliant run. They just He just ghosts in between them. Brilliant header from him. Hagenal doesn't even challenge it. Showing him how it's done there. Go on. Gustafsson now. I don't know why they didn't mark him up there, but Gustafsson's going to be in a bit of trouble. Oh, well played. Great ball in. And Petter Son. Oh, my God. It's 3-0 to Uxalt. Gabriel Pettersson with an absolutely brilliant header. There's no way... I mean, hey, like I said, swings and roundabouts and all that jazz. We've had some games where I think we deserve to win and we didn't. And today, 3-0 up is absolutely ludicrous to us here. Gustafsson does so well. Just drops his shoulder here. Does the defender. Pettersson skates in between the centre-backs. Great header from him and we're 3-0 up. Come on! And make no mistake, we do not deserve to be three goals up. We barely deserve to be winning this game. I think maybe we've slightly edged it. Jabari again. Scoops it to the centre. Allness is not going to be able to do much other than just head that harmlessly at Beria. Uh, performance. Except the performance wasn't even that good. Just the result is phenomenal in this game. That's really all that matters right now is the result. And it's nice to finally have one of these, I suppose, go in our favour here. Brendeshaw could have even slipped that through, really, but he didn't need to. We're just holding on to the ball now. Young Dean. Oh, he's gone for the... Oh, hang on. He almost a good... Oh, still a minute left. Hopefully we don't give them one. Good save from Beria. He deserves his clean sheet. He's been excellent tonight when we needed him the most. Uh, he's pulled out a couple of decent saves that have kept this lead intact nicely. Another good clearance from Vuznarekis. Well played. And it's gone straight to Hilmerson as well. He can just get on his bike now, kill the final few seconds of this match, and it's going to be a 3-0 victory. Hilmerson's just holding that ball up, pops it back for Antonsen, and that is surely going to do it. And there we go. Sevadol and nil. Uxalt 3. Like I said, we did not deserve to win this. We probably didn't even deserve... No, in fact, we didn't. We didn't deserve to win the game, let alone by three goals to nil. It's all just come up for us in this one particular match. They did have a lot of shots from range, but even so, because that does still only keep us three points clear now. But look at the goal difference changes now. We moved to 11 clear of them and six points clear of them as well. You'll notice as well that Kumla, incredibly, are back with a 7-3 victory over Arlefors. These guys just will not go away if we actually could get ourselves an automatic promotion this year. And we're playing well, sort of. After the game, Cali made his way across to Keeler's Park. After walking around for a while, he noticed a man dressed entirely in black, sat on a bench. He approached carefully and sat down next to him. Callie? Yes? I'll be brief. Your brother has got himself mixed up with some very dangerous people. He has information on them that they do not want getting out. That is why he was taken. I... I knew that job of his was too good to be true. They've taken him to Iceland, but they've already moved him twice. So if the pattern continues, then he won't be there for long. Who... who are these people? They call themselves the Nomads. Organised crime syndicate operating throughout Scandinavia, specialising in gambling through sports manipulation, extortion and drug trafficking. Whatever Henrik has on them, it must be huge, and they clearly don't have it yet, otherwise your brother would not still be alive. How... how am I supposed to take them on? The man reached into his pocket and pulled out a USB stick, placing it on the bench. This is a start. The man got up from the bench and began walking away. Hey, how can I trust anything you say? The man lifted up the bottom of his shirt to reveal a grey tattoo of a wasp, similar to that which Callie had seen on the Strömtorps player. Be safe, Callie. They've stayed under the radar of authorities for years. You are waking a dragon, and I have no idea how far those flames can spread. I mean, you can't deny it. That is a lot of green and yellow that we're seeing there. We have these random spells with three straight draws, followed by three straight wins. 
<laughs> which does in fact mean that we're now drew another three straight draws. Hopefully not though, uh, is the situation, particularly when you look at the fact that that's only two goals conceded in six matches and five clean sheets over that same period of games. Can we go all the way and actually win the title this year? Maybe, maybe. Because if you come second, you end up in an absolutely ridiculous playoff system. So that's going to be fun. Not. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, wow, um, then drop a like. That would be tremendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome too. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Go follow there too. And I'll see you guys very soon for some more Nordic Nomadery. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.